Welcome to the first ever mile per... <laughs> Welcome to the first ever real world EV efficiency test on this channel. Now there may be others, but you haven't seen it on this channel yet. This is gonna be ran the same way I do my mile per gallon test. Exact same drive, it's 100 miles, and I'll give you more information about the test here in a little bit. Let's take a look at this car on the outside, a little bit of the inside, and then we're gonna go on our drive and I'll tell you all the specs and everything about the car. So today we have a 2024 Hyundai Ioniq 6. It's the all wheel drive version. So we're looking at about 270 miles of range and it is rated at just over three miles per kilowatt hour and we're gonna see if we can hit that or do a little bit better. Now this is a limited trim if I didn't mention that. Take a quick look at the trunk. It is a powered trunk and it's a decent amount of space. There will be a full review of this car already up on the channel and I will have that linked in, in the description and at the end of this video. Quick look at the back. This has the gray and white interior. It does look pretty good. Got vents there. Nice bolstering in the seats in the back. That's pretty good. I like this silver and black. Just really looks good together. You do have a small panoramic roof on top. It's not a full panoramic roof. Here is the front. You do have that dual screen setup that Hyundai and Kia have introduced in these EVs. Uh, everything looks really good. So far, it seems to be pretty comfortable. I will give you more information on the drive and parameters of this test because it will be a little bit different with the EV than it was with the M mile per gallon test. So let's get to our starting point and let's get this test started. We are starting here at the gas station, just like we start our mile per gallon test. That way we can get the exact same miles as we do with that. And we're gonna be following the gauge right here on the display. We're gonna reset that right now for drive info. So that's the one we're gonna follow right there is reset. And we are gonna get going and I'll give you some parameters about this test since it's a little bit different. If this is your first time joining us, now this is going to be the first time you're joining us for an EV efficiency test, but it is the same as the mile per gallon test that I perform. We're gonna drive 100 miles, we're gonna use the exact same route that we use for the um, ICE vehicles for the mile per gallon test. The only thing that's different is, is that we're not filling up the tank and we're not gonna to be topping the tank off. So in that aspect, then, you know, this is going to be just a little bit different. We're gonna be following the car's mile per gallon or miles per kilowatt average. And then at the end, we will do some calculations to see whether it's actually going to come out to the same as what the car says versus what EPA says. So we'll check that out at the end. We're gonna be driving in normal mode so whatever you would normally get in the car and just start it up and go. We're not changing it to eco. We're not trying to maximize the mileage here. We're just trying to get what you would get if you just got in your car and took off driving. We are driving five miles per hour over the limit because that is the average or the norm for most people. Um, some do more, some do less, but the average is about five miles per hour over. So we're looking at 60 on the highway, 75 on the interstate, and anywhere from 35 to 50 in the city. Uh, there's two towns that we will drive through. We will make a full loop through both of those towns on the way there and on the way back. That way we hit stop signs, stop lights, um, all of those type of things. The test is also ran 50 miles in one direction, 50 miles in the exact opposite direction. So we will come back the exact same way we went. That way we negate any wind or um, terrain, hills, that type of thing. It'll negate all of that. Uh, try to make it, you know, as even as possible on this test or as controlled as possible. You know, normally, no, you're not going to go, the, may not go the exact same way back as you do at the beginning of the test, 
but that is just to try to keep everything even keel across all to all the tests that we do. Um, they're all ran the exact same way. But every car is gonna behave differently. Uh, this car itself says 270 miles of range, which when we charged up, we had 281 miles of range. Climate control. Climate today is, is starting out. We're at 80 degrees right now. We are supposed to climb up to upper 80s. And during this test, we may not hit see that. Uh, but so the but everything's going to be good temperature for this test and the climate inside the car we are going to be set at 72 right now um, if that doesn't hold up i will let you know if i have to adjust it but we are running with air conditioning uh, because nobody drives around without their heat or air conditioning on unless you are running out of power and you're not going to make it somewhere so normal get in set it where we want it and we drive make sure that we are comfortable all right we're coming into a first town so i'm going to update you on that right now we just came out of town after making that loop so now we have gone 8.1 miles you see we're settled in at 60 miles an hour and we're at 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour so so far we are well above epa and that is going to give us a lot better range uh, than just the 270 that they suggested. We'll calculate all those numbers at the end, but this is gonna be a pretty fun trip. As I said earlier, this is the 2024 Hyundai Ioniq 6 limited all-wheel drive. So you got 270 miles of range is what EPA has rated it at. Uh, when we plugged in and charged up, it actually said 281 miles, uh, but that was just based off of the drive that uh, when they brought the car to us. Uh, so they had a long highway drive, probably had good efficiency. And so it registered that it could go 281 miles instead of just 270. Um, the other thing is, uh, this is the all wheel drive version. Um, which is why it's just 270. If you go to the rear wheel drive with, um, I think the smaller 19 inch wheels, I believe it is, uh, you can get like almost 340 miles of range, something like that. It's some crazy, crazy number that we don't hear very often. Now, the looks of this is what's kind of been controversial. Some people like it, some people don't. Some people have came out and later on said, you know, it's really not that bad. They really don't, it really doesn't bother them. Styling depends on the person. So some will like it, some won't. What manufacturers try to do is appeal to the masses, um, but sometimes you're not going to hit that mark. But the biggest thing with this one was the efficiency. It was trying to give you something that was the most efficient sedan family car that you could get. And this is one of the most efficient that you can get. The pricing for these is really not that bad. Um, this one, as it is, as it's loaded and set up, this comes in at $55,000. And that is a reasonable price, actually, for a fully loaded EV with, like I said, 270 miles. This is it sitting in a great price point uh, for this car. You know, you could go out and buy a Ford Explorer right now that's gonna cost you $55,000, $60,000. This car is priced right along with what the mainstream ICE vehicles are. Now, if you can get that and you've got, and you're able to do a lease and get that $7,500 tax credit, now you're taking that down into the 40s and you're leasing, we've got a lot of good uh, leasing options right now. So that might be an option for you if you have charging at home. That's, that's a game winner. I mean, you're getting an EV for under $50,000 that will go almost 300 miles, if then 300 miles if you want one that'll go that far. And you're, you got charging at home, you don't have to pay for any gas. And honestly, your, ga your electric bill is gonna go up, but you're looking at somewhere around $50 a month, $75 a month tops. How much would you spend in gas? You're gonna spend two, $300 a month in gas? It's kind of a no-brainer, but I understand EVs are not for everyone. 
This EV specifically is not for everyone. Um, I actually am, am really enjoying it. I'm actually, <laughs> I actually like driving this better than I did the Ionic 5. I like the exterior looks of the Ionic 5, but the interior for me was just like, okay, it's an EV and it, it's nice, but it wasn't anything special. This, I actually feel like I am driving a luxury car. I mean, this is an awesome car. So we're getting ready to enter our next town. So I'm going to give update you guys on that. Um, and we're gonna make a loop through this town and then get up onto the interstate. We are entering the second town now, which we will make a loop through this one also. And right now we have now traveled 28.7 miles and we're at 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour. So we're doing really well there. You can also see down here in the corner, we are at 88% charge. I think we started our test right at 98%. Um, that's where we're at right now. We're gonna make the loop through this town as I stated earlier, and I will update you again before we get up on the interstate. Okay, we have made it through town, did that loop. Right now we are at 35. Getting up on the interstate right here, sorry about that. At 36 miles, 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Now, we are getting ready to get up on the interstate here, so we'll see what happens there. Um, we're probably gonna see that drop quite a bit. All right, we're gonna accelerate up here. Not, nothing really to hear here, but does have good power to accelerate up onto the interstate. Go ahead and get over. We're gonna get up to 75 and then we will lock in there. All right. Should be there, 75. And you can also see this has the Hyundai driver assist on it. Or sorry, not Hyundai driver assist, highway driver assist on here. So you've got lane centering, you have automatic lane changes, uh, it's all a pretty awesome in this car. Uh, I will show you the lane change here. Um, just to let you know, we also have 85% battery left. You can see on this screen also. We're gonna do a lane change, automatic lane change right here. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna push up slightly. It's gonna bring on that and you can see that it changed lanes all by itself. I took my hand off the wheel, but yeah. All you have to do is press down to the lane that you want to go, left or right, but you don't press it all the way down to lock it in. You just do the three flash or five flash or whatever they call that, and it will automatically move itself over. Now, you are supposed to keep your hand on the wheel, but if you just touch it lightly and let it go, it will go ahead and move on over. The other thing awesome about the Highway Driver Assist is it drives a long time before it tells you to put your hands on the steering wheel. And now this one is doing a little bit more often than our Tucson, but our Tucson, <laughs> uh, we, we could go quite a very long time without ever having to touch our steering wheel. <laughs> okay, all right, let's get back to it. Just to let you guys know uh, the highway driver assistance is one of the best that I have ever driven and been in because there are no eye trackers. <laughs> Our trackers are very annoying. We are at 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour. We're going 75 on the interstate. I will update you again after we get off of the interstate. Actually, we're gonna make a loop around and come back down the other side, but I will update you then. All right, we, we are coming up on our exit off of the interstate. This is where we're gonna make our loop and come back down the other side and head back in the reverse order. So right now we are at 49.4 miles and 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour, down to 80%, been running 75 this whole time. We are going to get off the interstate right here. Generally, this intersection doesn't have a whole lot of traffic, so we should be able to just quickly circle around and go right back down the other side. 
getting down to 3.6 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour um, that was you know prevalent of driving 75 on the interstate seems like we might have been driving a little bit into the wind um, but I, I don't think uh, there's not a whole lot of wind going on today it's less than 10 miles per hour so it shouldn't have a huge effect on anything okay we're gonna accelerate back up to 75 and right now 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour it's probably gonna drop here in just a second we're at 50.8 miles 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour uh, 80 percent battery left and we are up to 75 miles per hour and i will update you again as we exit off of the interstate and back to town where we'll make a loop getting ready to get off the interstate up here so right now we're at 63.1 miles and 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour we're down to 76 percent of battery and looks like we're estimating around 218 miles left all right we're gonna get off right up here we're gonna be heading back into town and we're going to make a loop through that town and then i will update you again as we exit that town and head back out onto the highway we have made the loop through town we are heading back out onto the highway now and we are 71.5 miles 3.7 miles per, per kilowatt hour so um, yeah, we are really doing a lot better than what is advertised or what the EPA has on the window sticker. We're down to 73% battery and 204 miles of range left. Just, just so you, you have another screen you can look at, kind of the same information except it doesn't have the miles per kilowatt hour on there. But we're doing excellent on the highway now at 60 miles an hour we're going to head back to the ta next town make a loop through that town and then head back to the gas station <laughs> where we started um, not that we are running with gas but that's where we started our test at so we'll end the test there and, and then we'll see what kind of numbers we've got we just entered town and we're gonna make a loop through this town. So right now we are at 92.6 miles and 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour. So we are still doing awesome. We're gonna make the loop through this town and when we exit town and head back to our starting point at the gas station, then I will update you on the way. Hey guys, as I was driving, and I'm still driving right now, so don't tell anybody that I'm recording a video while I'm driving. Um, but what I was thinking about was, is my calculations were wrong. I was off by, on my miles per kilowatt hour. I don't know why I was thinking that what the EPA had on the window sticker of 33 kilowatt hours for 100 miles um, I, I was computing that as three miles per kilowatt hour which is not accurate that's not true to get that number you actually have to take the miles that the epa estimates for your range so in this case is 270 miles then you divide that by usable kilowatt hours which this car is 77.4 usable kilowatt hours that comes out to 3.47 or 8 or something like that it's between 3.4 and 3.5 it will be up on the screen <laughs> i'll put that up there um because i just did it while i was driving real quick if we stay at 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour then we are going to get about 285 86 miles of range instead of the 270 that they're suggesting so we'll have to see where our numbers end up but i will give you those calculations and what the um, estimated range would be with the miles per kilowatt hour efficiency that we come up with all right i will see you soon 
Okay, we are back at the gas station where we started at. What we ended up with was 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour. Exactly 100 miles worked out perfect. We got 65% battery left. So we're doing great there. 182 mile of range left. We saw the window sticker earlier and it has this rated at 270 miles. They, it says on there 33 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. If you take 270 miles and divide it by the 77.4 kilowatt hour battery that is in this, you come up with 3.4. Let me see what the exact number is here. So what you get is 3.48. So that is what we want to average on here. So we want 3.48 miles per kilowatt hour is what we were shooting for. And we got 3.8. So I don't, it doesn't have any decimal points after that. So if we take 3.8 times 77.4 kilowatt hour, we are looking at 294 miles of range. 294 miles of range that you can actually get out of this car driving it just basically the way that I did. And that was five miles per hour over the speed limit in normal mode, driving through cities and towns and interstate, just kind of a mix. That's kind of what you can expect. That's pretty awesome. So EPA, three point four eight miles per kilowatt hour we got 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour epa 270 mile range our estimated range 294 miles make sure you hit the subscribe button if you want to see more tests like this one and then click on one of the videos that's on the screen right now one is a review of the ionic 6 that we're looking at right now the other one is going to be one that youtube suggests that you might like off of the channel. Um, I think you're gonna like both of them, so make sure you click on one of them, and then I will see you in that next video.